was. <laughs> Introducing Amanda Cook <laughs> and Stephanie Gretzinger. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. We this don't. is all gonna be on Instagram. <sighs> and that's sad. <laughs> Anyways. Hi guys. <sighs> How are you doing? <laughs> Neat. Sometimes at this point you have to understand in these two weeks that you, if you don't know how to laugh at things, that you'll go out of your mind <laughs> in the wrong sort of way. Not so much into the mind of Christ, <laughs> more <laughs> in another direction. It's important not to take yourself too seriously. And clearly we don't. Hmm. I'm giving everyone the cold shoulder. Oh. <laughs> I just noticed on the... <laughs> it's in these days, the it's cold in shoulder. the shoulder. That's what it's all the cool kids are doing. Modest is hottest. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for observing that. Yes, everything else is shrouded in black. <laughs> it's true. Did you know black is actually all the colors? What? Sure, write it down. Whoa. Whoa. I'm not anti-color. I love color. Just, I just like all of them together. Yeah. Totally. Vibrancy. And it's really just that your personality is so, like, explosive that you would just, nobody it's, could handle it if you yeah, wore, like, all the colors. In, yeah. You know? If you were wearing bright colors and all the patterns, it might just be overwhelming. It'd be overwhelming to all of us. <sighs> Shall we pray? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Gonna bring it in. Reel it in. Gonna bring it in. <laughs> I feel like there's too much in between us in our yep. friendship. Just gonna remove all that. Whoever holds the orb <laughs> has the secret to worship leading. <laughs> what is, what are, no, I'm kidding. It's getting weird. I'm laughing on the microphone so you feel me with you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm with Thank you. you. I'm so with present. you and everything always so until present. the end of the age. Forever. <laughs> Write that down. Girl Scouts <laughs> honor. <laughs> Holy Spirit. Oh, you're so much fun. Father Jesus, thanks for being with us all the time in us, around us. We just ask that you would... <laughs> You would fill our, our minds with the clear thoughts that you want to give to your people today. That this would just feel like a family room, that we'd have tons of fun um, while we all learn things. And <clears throat> that more than anything, we would catch the heart of it all. Not, what's the quote? You won't, they won't remember what you say or what you did or. Yeah, there it is. I remember how you feel. Help us to feel it, Lord. Amen. <laughs> we should pray again. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Anyways. <laughs> we talk about this. Can I ask you a question? We could do that. Yeah, we can do that. Is there something that you wanted to no, I don't, I have I have specific things that I want to say, but I um. We decided to combine this class because we wrote out our class descriptions and they felt like super complimentary, plus we like doing this together. There's something in friendship and leaning that we love so much that we have <clears throat> come to find we're living in our own hashtag friendship goals. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> who decided that? I want to know who started that hashtag. That is real. That's a thing. It's so funny. Um, but I, we, we, we find that, I mean, there's something so sweet. People often ask us questions about leading worship together and about, 
the sweetness and the goodness and the depth and the light, you know, and I feel like we're talking about um, patience in, in the presence, right? And we're talking about spirit-led worship from a spirit-led life. And those two things, they, we run alongside each other in those things so closely and so right. connected. So we wanted, right. to, we wanted to be able to kind of let you see that at work in the present moment. So, yeah. Yeah. Because it's a whole lot more than, <laughs> it's a whole lot more than the hour that you see up here, right? It's that Melissa talking about the 98%, right? We're in all of that mm -hmm. together. And so it changes everything. I think, because we're all really, really, I'll start with this. We all know it'll always be true that what people don't see is the most important thing. <laughs> what, you, what you have with the Lord in secret will always be the most important thing because it's going to come out. It's tested when everyone else is watching. Yeah. And that's the thing that we're really talking about here is yeah. that w within context, we've all had a secret place life. We live in that place with the Lord. This is a an open conversation with him at all times. So by the time you're asking him what he's doing in a room full of people, it's, it's just an, a continuation of the converse, conversation, right? It's, it's always an open conversation, morning and night. The fire must be kept burning on the altar day and night, night and day, which sounds really intense, but it's a lot more simple. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more simple than we make it out to be, you know? And... Um, <clears throat> So that being said, context is you have your own walk with the Lord <laughs> and you have secrets with him yeah. and you have songs for him and from him that are not intended for anyone else. This is coming from, this is for those of us who are stewarding that in secret. We have that understanding, right? Yeah. So when we come into a corporate setting, the waiting is natural. It feels very natural to be still and to wait. Um, even though we know the pressure that we feel from a room or from someone else, right? Like we can come in with confidence because we know what we've built with him in secret. So that's the context for everything that we're going to say. Um, do you want to say anything else about that? Or should I? Just stick with us while we go order. We're, we're not uncomfortable. If you are, I'm sorry. We're just going to flow back and forth. We do this all the time. <laughs> so it's, it's just how we always do it. Yeah. Um, I think I, one thing, if I can, <clears throat> I feel like I'm returning to practical things often. And I spend a lot of time in an ethereal, like, wonderings and imagination station. What am I saying? I am, <laughs> the right I love thing. imagining things. I love, you know, picturing, visualizing, you know, setting a vision in place. But to me, I think I'm, I'm finding when I, when I wrote this class description out and I was talking about like a spirit led life to me, friendship, friendship, right. friendship with the spirit, friendship with right. my own spirit, friendship, like in person, yeah. um, to me, that's that's the foundation of this class is to learn how to walk in step. Right. Um, and Paul Young, who wrote The Shack, he he has this quote where he talks about how the a healthy family moves at the pace of its slowest member. And if if I think about that, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> how many times have I dialed myself back to like engage and embrace and create space for? You know, for my even for my childlike self, like friendship with the Spirit looks like communion with the Holy Spirit in daily practice, and in getting to know the friendship of of receiving God as a friend, receiving God as not just a father, not just a savior. Which I mean, just sounds funny in front of those words, because I mean it's right. all encompassing. Please understand, foundation of that is that it's all encompassing. But for me, I didn't grow up knowing the spirit of God as, a, as like a deep friend that walked in step with me. 
like, I'm slow. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. I take a long time to move, to make any decision, to think anything through. I mean, almost infuriatingly so. Like, I'll go to a coffee shop and be like, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. I still don't know what I want. I'm that person. I'm, I'm that person. And then, you know, I get there. And I'm like, oh. You know, I, I, and I've often... Is this okay? This I'm is just great. okay. Yeah, so. Setting up, setting up a little bit. I think friendship and step with the Holy Spirit in order because we love to use the language of like, you know, spirit-led worship, spirit-filled life, spirit-led, spirit-filled. What does it mean to me? It looked like Holy Spirit coming in to my pace of transformation because He understands my pace of transformation and actually meeting me in the pace of it. And it doesn't feel, here's the thing about a deep friend, it doesn't feel like he's dumbing himself down for me. It doesn't feel like he's making something less. Or frustra- he's not even frustrated with the pace of transformation. I get frustrated with the pace of my own transformation. Like, oh, why don't I have this down already? You know, why don't I have this mastered? <laughs> I'm only 33. Oh, my gosh. But I, I, I think about the Holy Spirit as a friend, it's a new thing for me, actually. Um, just this morning, oh, this is okay. I share that. Just this morning, I, you might want to share part of the dream or whatever. But the gist of it was that Steph was had a dream. I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to share the dream? It was so powerful, and share. it has to do with all of this. <laughs> My, <laughs> I had this dream the other night. This is this week, guys. <laughs> it's like the night before last. I um. Uh, which is part yesterday why I'm like standing in front of everyone like, what do words mean? What does Bible say? Really, legitimately, it, it's just like, no, this is where I am today. And you can feel that I'm here. You just don't know what I'm saying. <clears throat> Neither do I. Um, and, and that's okay. I mean, there are, day, there are days like that. I think I had a dream the night before um, that I was trying to... I was trying to get some vacation, like I needed some rest, and I went um, to the beach. I was in a beach house, which is like my favorite thing. That's how I grew up getting away is like to stare at the ocean. <laughs> I don't even need to be in it. I just need to watch the water, water the, the water. move. <laughs> watch the water move. <laughs> Wally bug my <mine> move. <clears throat> sorry. And so then I'm watching the water. <laughs> I'm sorry, I immediately go into some sort of dramatic character just have my whole life. And then <clears throat> I'm, I'm about to have crab. I'm going to eat this lobster, different than crab. It was a lobster. <laughs> I'm about to eat a lobster. And I start, I realize that it, it's alive. And I'm like, no. So I start beating the crap out of this <laughs> lobster. Like with my fist, I'm sucking the lobster. <laughs> I didn't have one of those cracker jackers. <laughs> you know what I those nutcracker jams for it. I just sock it. So, and then all of a sudden, while I'm beating it, I realize it's, it's turned into a kitten. <laughs> Super disturbing, I know. It, that was my reaction, <laughs> minus the laughter. I was terrified. And I'm like, oh my goodness, all this time, I thought it was a hard shell, and it's a baby kitten. And I am beating it, and I am okay, I was about to devour the poor kitten. And I'm freaking out in the dream. And I'm like, okay. And the cat gets up and runs off. And I'm like, no, no, but you're dying. Now I have to fully kill you because you don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like you run over a cat and you're like, now I have to shoot you. And it's the worst moment. It's like so traumatic, right? Especially if you grew up on a farm, you're like, that is my childhood in a nutshell. That's your childhood. (laughs) All my cats died tragically. I'll come back to that I'll later. Come back. <laughs> so, so I, the rest of this dream, I know it's super funny, but it was like, it, it like bothered me for all day, the whole next day. And I'm like, this means something. And I'm mad that it does. I'm mad that the lobster kitten story means something. You know, like, <laughs> I'm mad that this dream means something. So, um, I, I start chasing this kitten around. It's like kind of, you know, squirrely at this point, but it thinks it's fine. Squirrely? It's, right. Now, now the kitten's a squirrel. <laughs> it's kidding. It's not. It's not. It's not. Stay with me. It's, so it's like running around and I'm trying to, I'm trying to like 
slow it down to take care of it or kill it. I'm not sure what it needs. I'm just trying to check on it now because I realize I've been hurting it. So I'm chasing it. And next thing I know, this, this thing runs up the rocks that are on the beach, runs up the rocks and dives into the ocean. And I start screaming, no! Like I was supposed to save this cat. I heard it, now I'm supposed to save it. And I just sit on the rocks like sobbing. And my sweet prophet mama, she goes, Hey, what do you think that means? And I'm like, pizza. <laughs> no, I know it means something, and I'm really upset about that. And I'm too, right, with your own dreams, it's, you just, mm. So she said to me, I think it's you. I think you're the kitten. I think you're the kitten. And I think that you're still being too hard on yourself in general. And she said, I think it's really special that the kitten jumped into the water. That's where we all go to die and live again. And I'm like, cool, cool, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> but that was, that was the dream, and it, it was actually really powerful. And so this morning. Oh. So this morning, friendship of the Holy Spirit in action. I walk in, stand in front of Steph, and she tells me this particular dream, which, uh, felt, it, it felt and feels continually like the Holy Spirit, he just, he want, uh, I hate even using a pronoun, it just limits, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of wholeness and holiness. Right brings all things together, reconciles everything in Christ, like tells us the truth about the Father and the Son and the reason and the why, brings wisdom and revelation and understanding and the knowledge of God. That's the spirit we're talking about. The spirit that holds every living thing together that hovered over the deep before God spoke, light be. This is the spirit of God, okay? This is, I'm, I'm just talking about, this is the Holy Spirit who comes and whispers in my ear through my dearest, deepest friend about a lobster kitten dream, seriously. And brings the immediate, like, peace to the anxiety of this, of the, of the literal thing that I was walking in with. Does that make sense this morning? And... Sometimes I think we get so caught up in <clears throat> pushing ourselves, trying to, trying to force our, ah, not force ourselves. I love pushing, pushing ourselves. It's a gentle push, you know, of a father saying, like, you can do this, like a coach. We can do this. Sometimes it's like <laughs> my first swimming lesson where I refused to get in the water. And my dad came out of the, like, the, the you know, the family viewing area. Oh, yeah. And he just got down with me. I was like, you're getting in the water. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not getting in the water. You're getting in the water. You know, and it, it was like this gen gentle but very, you know, fear of God push <laughs> into the water. And I love the water ever since. Sometimes fathers just know that, well, when it's time. When it's time. <sighs> I don't know where I was going with that, except that I feel... Oh, this is where I was going with that. Thanks, Spirit. Uh, is that sometimes we, we present ourselves um, further than we are in our practice. Yes. So yes. whatever we... So good. <sighs> when practice is a big deal, practicing... practicing the presence of God wow. is a big deal. Practicing being present, becoming present with the presence of God is a big deal. Yeah. That to me is where all the authority is. That's right. it's, it's in the day-to-day -day simple practice of paying attention of, and, and I'm, I'm talking practical here, like, like waking up and making a choice. Like there's a journal called the Gratitude Journal and it, it I mean, it's, <laughs> when I do it, it changes everything. And then I forget about it and wonder why the devil's talking to me all day. Just kidding. No, but I... <laughs> this is why practice is so important. When I actually practice this, 
It's like my whole life is an experiment. I love how we look at the Israelites and we're like, hindsight 2020, how could you forget that God was faithful? And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, exactly. I'm like, no, like it's our finite brains have a real hard time being interrupted in the story that we tell ourselves. And by the time we're 12, we've already decided what we think about God, people, ourselves, through nurture and nature. So it's a lifetime of testing the thoughts and emotions that I feel like we've signed up for in the spirit, which gives us actual authority. Like in the spirit, our spirit connected to the Holy Spirit, I find myself watching Amanda, watching myself as a witness, almost like as an inner witness, having an extreme emotion or an extreme thought and letting it pass fully through my body without saying a word. But it's like I'm, I'm sitting with the Father, Son. I'm sitting with the Spirit of Revelation. I'm sitting with the Holy Spirit. And I'm able, there's a capacity for it rather than like being bonkers and jumping from one to the next to the next like a, like a insane ping pong match. Does that make sense? And I just love that the Holy Spirit is in our pace of transformation wherever we're at. We're not too slow. We're just not too slow. I think we punish ourselves. We think we need to understand the whole of everything, (laughs) especially with the pressure of getting up on stage with a microphone and singing something. And we teach about, like, you know, you can't bring people where you haven't been. True. Sometimes we try to go to all the places, and then we get up on stage and we're like, go to somewhere. Instead of, like, going to a meadow Going to a clear place, just a simple clarity, simple thoughts, simple clarity, where we're at, in our pace, today, and offering that. Does that make sense? There's a there's a beauty in the simplicity of that to me that I feel like is is it's changing my approach to life. It's actually slowing, it's not slowing things down, it's embracing the pace. Does that make sense? Well, and I, like, I remember when my dad, I I remember my dad, this is, like, super TV show commercial stuff. It was, like, well, that'd be really, I'm not gonna, no, I am. You know those stupid commercials that are, like, in between shows on Hulu or whatever, and it's all the drugs that you should take for things, and they're just listing off side effects, and in the background, (laughs) it's really pretty pictures of families that are really happy on these drugs. (laughs) It's really stupid, but, um, but, you know, there's like always, there's a kid riding on a bike with dad pushing the, you know, you can do it, you know, and in the background, it's like rectal bleeding. Um, so it's, it's, it's like, well, you're watching this really moving thing play out and you're hearing all these horrible things that seem to pass you. That's why people order that stuff. Cause they're like, oh, I totally missed the side effects. I was watching the movie. Um, All that to say, I remember when (laughs) my dad was teaching me to ride a bike and it was scary at first. So a good father who met me in my pace, like I was freaked out, right? But he met me there, he started slow and because he did, it built trust and I like went fast a lot faster than I thought I would because he was running alongside with me and because he was there, once I built confidence looking at his face because he was so close, I knew he would not just shove me out there and then pedal, keep pedaling, look out for the bush. You know what I mean? Like he stayed with me and ran with me. It was in my face while while I pedaled, while I got confidence. And then I said, okay, let go, let go, right? But I feel like, I feel like that's just what you're saying. That's what I'm seeing. Like I'm, we actually gain momentum by letting letting this happen, the thing you're talking about. Like, he comes into our moment not being in a hurry. And like a father does, builds trust with us, even though he didn't have to. He's, he's completely trustworthy, but he builds it with us because he's kind. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I was just thinking about that while you were saying it. That. Yeah. And honestly, like, the... To walk this way, to live this way. I mean, it takes patience. And we get so frustrated with ourselves. But patience is a fruit of the Spirit. You only bear fruit when you take time to be with the one who is all of those things. Mm -hmm. There's not a fast track to this. Mm -hmm. There's not a fact. What? 
There's not a fat track. There's not a fast track to like all of a sudden one day I hear the voice of the Lord and it's super clear all the time. <laughs> like, oh, I used to just get it every now and then. Like it's, it's like what Bill was talking about today. If we are measuring ourselves, if we're studying, if we're being with the Lord, if we're being, if we're doing that, like I know the word says study to show yourself approved. That is, that is true, but it's, I think it's to the Lord first. This is not like I'm, I'm studying so that when I get up in front of all these people, I have something to say or, or I can, um, I know what he wants to do in this setting. Like it, sh- it should all be overflow. It's like the really, and I know we're all talking about a lot of the same things over and over again. Why? Because we're becoming a healthier family and we kind of all have the same message with a little bit of different language because it's what we're becoming. We're actually becoming these things. And we're like, oh, yeah, because I got this from you. <laughs> like, we're all learning from each other now. So you're going to hear the messages bleed over a lot because it's what we want to be about. It's who we're looking to become. Like, a lot of my language comes from these people pouring into my life. And now I'm taking it and increasing what I've been given for free. Yes. Yes. And, I, and I'm bringing my own history with God. Like I've, I've walked with God for most of my life and I'm bringing, I'm pulling that in. I'm not, I'm not discrediting everything that was before, but I am saying so much of who I am now is because of who you are. It's because of who you are. It's because of the people that I allow to influence me, that I allow to go deep into my mind and my spirit and, and actually influence the way that I think, the way that I see, um, and I, I know I said it before, but I think we're so, we're so anxious to be, to become the thing that we're like, I know I'm born to be this, but you're just, you're being that. This is, who you are becoming has everything to do with who you'll be in this moment right now. Right. Will you just let yourself be in this moment? Will you just be okay with waiting on the Lord without getting something. Like, I, re- I remember a season, like, and this isn't me tooting my horn, this is me learning, like, this is my learning. I remember being so, because uh, I was a bit different than Amanda in the sense that I was always terrified to try new things, but I did it scared. I, it's, it's one of my greatest strengths to, to look fear in the face and run at it with a sword. I will do it. Um, and not every time, but what I'm saying, that it's also <laughs> the thing that's had to like majorly mature in me to just go, okay, hey, I'm not looking for you to work harder. I know you can work. I know that you will do this for me, but will you just be here with me? And so when I was, I learned that lesson, like running into a wall, you know what I mean? Like running into a brick wall, (laughs) just, and I, and I remember like a season when I just would sit with the Lord and I miss it so much. Sometimes I wish the season would be like this again, where I had at least eight hours in a day that I could lock myself in the basement and shut the door and be on my face. I miss that, but seasons change. And I don't leave that season behind me. It still has everything to do with the moment I'm in. But the seasons change. And I think maturity goes, oh, what is happening in this season? What, what are you doing in me now? And um, what do we, what does our relationship look like in this season? We can tend to pull things from another season and we get comfortable with them and then we want to pull them into the next. And it distorts our hearing. It distorts our seeing. It distorts our ability to lead people in a moment because we're always trying to, we got comfortable in the last season. We got comfortable getting really good at the thing we were good at there. And God's inviting us into discomfort again. Covenant was never supposed to be comfortable. That's not what it means. And I think we, we, we do that. And it's, it's, it's okay because we learn to, I think it's really important. We learn to love what God is doing in us. That's okay. Do you know that it's okay to love yourself? It's okay to love that you're not like anyone else. It's okay to love what God is doing in you. Yeah. That's okay. It should be celebrated. Wow. Something's wrong if we can't do that. Wow. There's a deeper issue there. But 
we, we get used to it, we get comfortable, and we're like, oh, I'm really good at this, and then we don't want to let go of it again, you know? But in every season, if there's not something that's scary to do, if we're not doing something that makes us uncomfortable or moves us beyond what we feel like we have capacity for, then we're not growing. If I don't feel completely <laughs> stretched and like maxed out, my capacity doesn't feel maxed. If I've come into a new season, then I'm probably still stuck in the old one. Um, so anyways, I saw that God wants, it, it's just, that's what I call growing pains. Yeah. Those are growing pains and they're super necessary. It's pain with a purpose and um, it's indicating growth and that's beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to stem off of that about the practice of it. Um, when you were talking, I was, I felt like I was brought back to a memory of piano lessons. Anyone take music lessons here? Yes, my people. Um, I, my parents put me in piano lessons when I was four and I fell in love with the instrument. I really did. I, it just, something about it made sense <laughs> in, in a, right. in a really well-meaning, beautiful, like home that loves God, um, but we, we, we sometimes had a lot of, we would cry a lot of tears and not know how to describe what was happening. We didn't have language for the heart necessarily. Um, music was the language for the heart in our home. And so I remember I learned classical piano and I played it for years and we have this thing called the Royal Conservatory of Toronto, which is like a, it's like a adjudication kind of, you know, program. You go through grades, you do all these things. You have to, and it all starts with the basic knowledge of scales and chords, right? I mean, all music is based off of that. And I went through like grades one through grade nine in this particular, in, in piano, and I got to grade 10 and had to switch teachers. Um, <laughs> she was a super intense, intense educator. I was terrified of her every lesson, every single week. I was like, oh, I'm so scared. Cause she had like two baby grand pianos in her living room and she would play with me on the other one. And I was like, ah, I can't like dueling pianos. Like dueling pianos. For I'm real. terrified. Yeah. It was intense. The point of this story is that the first lesson for real. Yeah. For real. The first lesson I showed up for, um, she had me play a scale. I played the scales. Sounds super simple, right? I'm like, okay, we've I've done scales for like years at this point. And so she has me play a scale and she's like, ooh, play another one. I played another one. She's like, okay, um, how about another one? So she has me play all of my scales and all of the fingering for all of my scales I had learned wrong. And it had served me okay up until that point because up until that point I didn't need to play them that fast. And so for the first three months of my wow. musical education with this university professor, like musician, she's just, she's incredible. She's like, well, here's what we're going to, we're going to go back to the beginning and relearn scales with the right fingering. Because in the test that I had coming up, they had three sections to the test. One was specifically like, uh, I'm going back to the memory of it. One of them was specifically scales. And if I don't pass the scales test, I can't actually play the repertoire that I want to for the next, like, the deeper thing. We talk about wanting to go deep, like, take me deeper than my feet. Right? We all sing the songs. <laughs> We're like, just, I want to go deep sea diving. But I don't have any equipment and... I'm scared of sharks, and I don't know how to swim, but I'm called to it. Yes, Lord, take me to the depths. I'm drowning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're like, we want to do, we want to do the things because it's in our heart to do them. And actually, like, this educator was brilliant. She, she actually was really adamant. She's like, I don't want to teach you what to learn. I want to teach you how to learn. She refused. Here's the thing. I had developed an, I had developed an ear for years because I love playing by ear and it's I'm more so I'm more <laughs> prone to that than sight reading or playing off of scores it took me a long long time to learn anything off a of score and 
She refused to let me listen to it. She was like, I want, I want to teach you how to learn this, how to figure it out, how to deep dive, how to search it out and inspire. She found a way to inspire the most mundane things um, for me. But those three months were, I will say, hell. I do believe in hell. It exists. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> No, I, I, I spent hours, hours at an instrument that I thought I had down, relearning the most basic, like the start, the, the back to the beginning, basically, of learning the instrument, learning how, not learning what, but learning how, because my how was off. It wasn't the what. I knew what the notes were. I could tell you them in my head. I could play them in my mind in my sleep. But the how, the practice of it, was faulty. And so she took me back and actually slowed them way down. Like, she had me practice them so slow, guys. I would, like, my brain would take a, just a break. I had to constantly reel myself in to remind myself I was playing a scale. It was horrible. Anyways. All that to say, I think sometimes like within our practice, because this taught me, I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this, within our practice, like our, our level of practice actually determines where we can go in the wild, wide, open expanse, the final frontier of God. And there's, there's, there's a practice to walking in step with the spirit that often goes unnoticed. There's a quote by Agnes DeMille that says, no trumpets sound when important decisions of our life are made. Destiny is made known silently. Come on. Okay. History to me is built on small, simple steps. There's something about practice that sets us up for life. This is about life in the spirit, and worship leading is an extension of that. It's like the 0.001% of it when all of a sudden all the eyes are on you and you get to direct the energy or conduct it. I love to think about it as conducting, just like... <laughs> when I was a kid, I, that was one of my dreams. It was that or be a cashier at Walmart. Or both. There's still time. <laughs> um, but to be a conductor, I was like, ooh, like to feel the, the presence of, the, of so many moving pieces um, with a tiny little stick in your hand <laughs> just waving it around. It just was like, I can't imagine something more. Sometimes I imagine myself like that. But I... I wonder about, um, I'm digressing. What I'm trying to say is that, to me, the, the practice, when we think we're going backwards, it's actually to set us up. It's to slow things down in order for us to be able to examine the wild frontier. Does that make sense? There are certain things, even theologically, that I feel like the Lord has hemmed me in in practice, brought me in. Like It's like slowing down the scales so that I actually have navigational tools when diving into the deeper existential questions of life or you know, asking the big questions. He doesn't want us to, it, mystery is not meant to be confusion. It's not meant to be confusing. The mystery of God is not confusing. There's like our, our, our spiritual guide is the Holy Spirit. So diving into the mystery of God looks like practicing walking in step or playing slow scales with the Holy Spirit in order to actually like return to something with a deeper repertoire, with a deeper understanding, with a deeper... There's a place for that to land. There's a place for that to be explored then. Does that make sense? Like, and we feel that with music. We feel that with music. When, we do the, when, we, when we're diligent about our practice in music because we're leading people in a musical way, right? Some of us. Um, I'm just speaking from a piano perspective. There's something about returning to the piano to me that feels like uh, I, I, there's a history on this instrument. There's a history and there's a practice. So I can go a lot of places or just play one note and it will feel, it'll f I feel the full weight of like all those years with the Lord of me like being frustrated with the instrument. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It all counts. It all counted, all the practice to this day. The, it all counts, like, and, and it builds. You'll notice that you build your practice. When you, when you practice something, you actually get more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
It's like the more you do it, the more you have, almost. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to inspire the daily practice of walking in step with the Holy Spirit so that when we're on stage or when we're leading people in worship or when we're directing or conducting the energy of the room to Jesus, we actually like are aware of what we're carrying, aware of what we're holding, aware of where we're at in practice and we don't push ourselves past that to try to impress anything or try to prove anything. Instead, we rest in the practice that we just came from. We rest in the encounter we just had. We rest in, in the knowledge that he, like, that we've, we've, we've explored with the Holy Spirit for six and a half days of the week. So when it comes to that tiny little pocket of time in front of people, we have a, we have a place to take them. I know this has been said many times over, but I think the practice thing is really essential. Practicing the presence of God. It looks like setting reminders on my phone. It looks like setting alarms. We have mine she just, ju- had, mine just went she off. just had an alarm that went off. It looks like setting alarms on her phone. This sounds so elementary, but it's it's so imperative. These alarms save my life over and over and over again. They're reminders to ground myself in love. <laughs> They're reminders to remember that I am the beloved. They're reminders to pray. They're reminders to go, hey Jesus, help. There was a time last fall when Steph reminded me, well, actually, she taught me this. Every prayer counts. Sometimes it's just Jesus help. Because I think sometimes I got, I got stuck in the headspace of, like, I need to come with, like, my full, like, the full thing, you know? The, like, when we pray on a mic and the music's going and everything turns into, like, you know, an intense encounter. But sometimes it's just an alarm going off and a turned attention. And, right. Holy Spirit, you're still here. Okay. I'm like, I am turning my attention to that, the practice of that. It looks like when I'm on the mountain, I determine what I'm going to do when I'm in the pit, the desert, or the wild. That's right. Like, what I, when I'm in the pit, the desert, or the wild, that's usually not when I make my decisions about what I'm going to do. I make a decision from the vantage point up here with clarity for the next moment, because it often is five minutes later that I forget, <laughs> right? right? So that's when I set, I set my alarms in clarity, and I remember the moment when the alarm goes off, I remember the clarity I had of the moment when I set the alarm. It's just super simple. It's like, oh, yes, I'm returning. I'm returning to that clarity. I'm returning to, like, I'm returning. I'm turning my attention. I'm practicing this. I'm practicing the presence right now. No, I, I think what I was thinking when you were saying that is, um, I think that, I mean, th- really the whole point is that if we neglect the practice, we neglect the presence in corporate yeah. settings, in our leadership. Um, and if we practice this in all the seemingly small ways, nothing is small. If we practice them all the time, then we'll make the same decision in every setting. Mm-hmm. If this is your way of living, um, instead of a knee-jerk reaction to whatever room you're in or whatever's going on in the moment. Some of us get super, super spiritual all of a sudden when we're in a room with everybody else who is. Like, it's way easy in this room to, like, lift your hands and worship, you know? But when you're all... Have, has anyone ever experienced, like, when you're in a room dancing and everyone else is doing it and you jump into it, but when you're at home in your house alone and there's no music, have you ever felt weird alone dancing? Why? Because it's not practiced enough. We've all been there. It feels weird. It shouldn't. It should be the other way around. And so that in in this room, if everyone else is dancing and spinning, and if in the moment you're like, oh, I think I need to just sit, you'll be okay with that. And you won't worry about why everyone else in the room might be thinking, well, why is she not dancing? And even beyond that, if somebody lays hands on you and says, we just ask, Lord, that you'd release the dance, you're going to be okay with that too because you know that now is your time to sit. And you didn't need anyone to tell you that. And you can graciously just let them pray and let it go. Because you're like, and, and I'm not saying you sit down because, like, like I'm, I'm insisting on doing the opposite of everyone else in the room. That's what I'm talking about. Going against the crowd just to go against the crowd is obnoxious and it's a different problem. 
I'm not talking about that. You, you understand the context in which I'm saying that. I think I would, like, if we could for, like, can we go into some, like, really, I feel, it feels to me, like, in my heart, there are a lot of really practical things that you guys would love to hear about operating, following the Spirit in, yes. in worship, yeah. in leadership. Yeah. Um, and so I want I want us to take, because I think, I think they're taking hold of the practice of it and the, the heart of it. I think you guys catch that. I want to go into practically, like, what you see happening when we're in that zone. Yeah. Would that be helpful? You're like, yes, I've been waiting. <laughs> That's all right. You needed to hear the first part too. Those of us who are anxious for the other part need the last part and vice versa. No, I'm kidding. That wasn't a correction. That was a joke. Um, or maybe it was. I'll leave that to you. I think, I think all of this is um, this, like in a... In a in a setting where you're leading other people, like when we're leading other people, that's, that's when we find out what we've actually built in secret. Wow. And that can be disheartening. <laughs> because a lot of times we come into a setting and we're trying to lead people into something and we're like, it's a dead crowd. Maybe you just don't have the authority. Been there. And in the moment, in the moment, it's easy to go, man, it was just rough in that room. I'll tell you what, like a spirit, there's like a spirit, (laughs) just like, man, it's like, it's the region, region. shake the dust, shake the dust off, (laughs) leave your peace. Let's get out of here. You know, what, whatever it is, you know, it's easy to get frustrated with um, people not moving forward, like in our, in our churches or our communities, like, oh, they're just not really open to this, or oh, I feel like I can't get them to come with me. Well, if there's, you can only do what you can do, and it may be worth looking into that you just may not have the authority to lead them where you're wanting them to go, and there shouldn't be any shame attached to that. It just means, okay, more practice. Chris, Chris, Daddy Chris, Valentin says all the time, when I went to school of ministry, it was one of the things that has stayed with me. Like, I mean, it's been almost 10 years since I came to go to school of ministry in Reading. But he said to us, if you're not failing, then you're not trying enough. Like, if you're not failing, then you're not trying. Because you're not always going to get this right. The truth is that you can't remove you from the equation. So when you step out to take risk on something, you're always there. Like a lot of us like to think that it often happens, like the spirit of God takes over our bodies and the unction he gives us is like only the spirit. And Bill would say it wasn't that good. We're always a part of it. And that's what he loves. It's his delight to partner with us. It's his delight to like overcome us and to, and to speak with us and through us. And that's really beautiful but he's not a user and he's not, he's not just, I think it's one thing to be like raptured, to be lost in the spirit and, and um, be a clear channel for him to speak through. It's another thing for us to think that God himself, and it's that there's no, none of us involved, we've completely disappeared, that it's only the spirit of God speaking through our mouths. Well, it's still your voice, isn't it? There's something of you involved here. We can't make ourselves, we can't be that self-important. We have to be willing to fail. We have to be willing to step out. And it's super important, like practically, to build relationships with leaders. If you don't have their trust, build it. Ask for a base. This is basic stuff, guys. Ask, go have a conversation with them. Like say, hey, I would, I would love to take a little time at the end of this song and kind of go off the map. I just, we could take a few minutes. Can we take like three, three to five minutes and just try this out? You know, if it needs to be smaller, don't, God can do something in a moment. He, you, he doesn't need you to have an hour. It, all it takes is like, a, it, if your heart has come to prepare, spontaneity, spontaneity is, oh, write that down. <laughs> That's a word, spontaneity. S-P-A, no. Okay, um, 
What, what is, what do they always teach? Spontaneity is the, re, no, pre, yeah, the yes. Spontaneity is the reward of preparation. Yeah. And I think that that's true prophetically as well. Like, we're, we're going to mess it up. That's the, that's the great part. It gets us over ourselves. I think that's one of the most key things. I think it's more impart, important than getting it right. I think it's more important to step out and try something when you've been blessed to do it, when you've been released to do it, and get it wrong or mess it up or it doesn't work. It doesn't happen the way you, it doesn't, it doesn't happen the way you thought it would. And you, it, it makes you get over all the wrong things. Like you came in hoping that you would perform well and that it would explode the room and that it would move everyone, it would change everyone's lives. And then you would have more authority and they'd trust you and you'd be known as a prophet. But it's real. I think we've all been there. We've all wanted to show ourselves approved. We've all wanted to be like, no, I really want to be before the Lord. I want to hear you so clearly that it changes a whole room. There's nothing wrong with that. But the practice has to come first. And you have to be willing to look like a total idiot. Like, you, to dance, it doesn't mean you need to take classes first. Like, you just do it. You need to dance at home when no one's watching, without the music. When something's not moving you, you decide to do it. So that when you get up here, it's just the decision you make. It's just natural. It's not based on the rise and fall of um, emotion or expression that's in the room. Um. I want to add to that, that um, recently I felt the Lord, <laughs> I had, um, I was being <laughs> given advice that I really needed one morning, and I found myself thinking thoughts like, well, it's just shallow, it just feels like shallow advice, <laughs> and I felt the Lord come in and say, what's wrong with shallow, and I was like, well, it's just shallow. Like, it's not deep. <laughs> I'm having this conversation with God. I'm having, like, an argument over, like, what's more important. Like, well, duh, isn't deep where we all want to go? And, like, the point is to get deep. Just to be, like, a deep person, you know? I was, like, I was, I was mad about what I felt like was shallow. And he kept pushing. He kept saying, what's wrong with shallow? But it felt like he, it, it, there was such innocence, like, in the purity of his voice that, you know, like when he asks a question, it's not to patronize us ever. <laughs> it's the, no, what really, what is wrong with shallow? Is there something wrong with shallow? And I found myself like spinning out a little bit on it. Well, yeah, like it's not. And I, all I kept, all I kept, <laughs> my only response was that it's not deep. And <laughs> that was my, well, it's not deep. And I felt the Lord like show me about the shallow end of a pool and the shallow the shallow places of the ocean, which is where most people congregate to, and it's where children learn how to swim. You don't throw them in the deep end and just like hope for the best. That's the worst idea ever. It's like, I remember going to the beach with Wonder, Wonder Grace Gretzinger, last New Year's, and it was the first time she saw the sand and the ocean, and it was just wide-eyed, and she, like, ran for it. I mean, she's just so, she's so wild. I love her. And I, I remember, I'm like, man, I, I have been getting this all wrong. I've been thinking that deep was better than shallow. It's always been both and. It's always been light and dark. It's always been, or light and deep is what I'm trying to say. It's always been both and. It's, I find that like sometimes we go into worship and we're like, we're going to take everyone to the depths. Let's go deep sea diving. But like, it's just as important for us to congregate and watch the waves and put our toes in. Like there, he speaks. And sometimes I'm like, I, the pressure comes on us and we're like, I have to have the unction and the revelation and I must be an oracle of the spirit. <laughs> I'm going to sing a poem straight from the heart of God and it will change the nation. Like I think, cause we all talk like that, right? And I'm like, what about, what about the like, like just, just sitting on the beach and looking at the waves and going, wow. That's so, if it's, do you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about it, it, it it's all, it, uh, it, uh, it, it's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's all so important. It's 
all so important. I just, I just feel like, practically speaking, when I'm swirling and thinking all kinds of thoughts right before I go to lead worship, the Lord often brings me back to like the introduction, the like the slow, steady, constant, still, quiet voice of God that's like feels almost too simple. And if I take a minute to breathe, literally breathe, because anxiety actually messes our breathing up, right? So I take a deep breath in and let it out, and I center my thoughts, my heart. You know, we talked about, you know, the heart being the place where all of our energy lives, everything. It's not a mind versus heart situation. It's all of it. And I just take all of my being, tuck it into the most simplistic, shallow, seemingly shallow, but the intro, the, the, the place where I can, I can rest, right? Then I can bring, I, I walk out with, there's a, there's a depth to that kind of, that kind of life, that kind of consistency. Bill often talks about like, okay, we're burning now, but show me who's burning in 20 years. Like, let's set ourselves up for a course. It's weird that I feel like pleasantly surprised when heroes, well, heroes is a sad, <laughs> I don't ever, ever want to put people up on a pedestal because everyone's going through their own process. But when people who were burning, who were like, who introduced me to the Holy Spirit have, you know, taken a break for a while now. And I grieve so deeply over that. So I'm, and I find that we're in a day and age where I'm pleasantly surprised when I'm like, oh, they still, they still are, they're still there. Oh man, like that moves my heart to the nth degree. There's a worship leader that, who introduced me, one of the introductions to really like the kindness and the friendship of the Holy Spirit. And he's still, he's just still, he's childlike and curious and inquisitive and moved, still moved by God. And I want to be that person at 70. I want to be the person with the brightness still in her eyes that life didn't take me out. It simply refined, it refined the childlikeness it focused it into the sim like the simple mantra prayers of Jesus. Yeah. I love you, Jesus. Have mercy on me. I want to become like the person whose heart, you know, beat the prayer, if that makes sense. And I think it's we 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 want to jump into the deep end constantly. And there's a day for that. There are days for that. There are seasons for that to like go deep sea diving and get into like the coral reef and all the things like. But to not forget, we have to come up for air, and we have to be able to rest. And you actually have to rest in still, you rest in still waters. I want to be able to sleep in storms. I really do. That's a practice as well. That's a practice. That's a choice of peace. I will be peaceful in the middle of the swirl. But there's a place for returning to, like, the simplicity and making alarms on our phone to remind us of the simplicity of the goodness. I want to say this because I think it's important. When we lead together we there's a reason why we don't really have solo leaders anymore because it feels way more productive and powerful to be in family um nobody gets um overly glorified <laughs> and nobody um and also no one is left hanging yeah. uh we cover each other all yeah. the time and um I think, and we find certain combinations of people that just, they work better and that's okay. Like I think, and practically we, we spend time with the people in our, in our bands. Like we, we spend time with, um, as leaders together and actually in the presence together. Like we take time, whether it's in sound check or whatever, to actually go off the map now. That's something that we do, like to take time and just see where the song could go and invite Holy Spirit to lead us into those open spaces, you know, so that we don't miss it. And I, and it comes, it comes from leaning into the spirit and into each other. You see us where I'm hardly ever, like I'm, we're constantly come, here and here and here and here. Like I'm not looking away from you because I don't care about you or because I'm unaware. I'm, I'm, I'm staying locked in here because I can see all my people too. There's a reason for that. So I can look them in the eye and say, when they play something that was powerful or prophetic, I'm like, yes. Or I, we're looking at each other often, like we're so different, even, even if we're just talking about me and Amanda, but like we're so different that in those moments, it's like we're looking at each other to go, okay, we're asking Holy Spirit questions all the time. We ask the, the Lord a lot of questions. And is it okay if I have a couple more minutes, Josh? 
like just t- because I feel like we needed some practical stuff. Um, really simply asking Holy Spirit ahead of time for vision, but then sometimes in the moment it changes and you're gonna pick up on things that are happening in the room. You're gonna pick up on things that are happening in your people on stage. You can, you might pick up on things that are, stuff, stuff might come up in you and you have to be able to sort like emotional maturity, ask the Holy Spirit questions, ask him to sort it out for you so it's clear and you're not taking cues from what you're feeling in the room. Like what might look emotional to you is actually very intentional. And um, not that we all don't let the emotions lead sometimes. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. What I'm saying is it's the practice of our lives not to be led by our emotions, but to pay attention to the emotion that's coming up so that we can go, Holy Spirit, how do we address this? Or lead them into the opposite, right? Um, Being aware of of where we are internally as leaders before we lead is super important. We don't want to lead the room into anxiety. Sometimes you're like, I feel so much anxiety. Maybe it's everybody in the room or maybe it's you. Mm -hmm. Like God is center ourselves beforehand. And I think um, it's important to lean on each other. Like if we've stewarded this thing in our heart before the Lord in secret, then we can come in and we don't care who gets the word. We don't care if when your heart is serving, is here to serve him, to minister to his presence first, and then to the people around you, the room that you're leading, then it doesn't matter to you who has the mic. You don't get frustrated when we don't get to your song. You don't get frustrated when somebody else sang out the word that you got. You go, oh God, you're speaking. And you learn to just be glad he's in the room. And to be glad you were there to witness what he was doing, to be a part of it. And then positions don't matter at all. And you can be confident in the, in the authority you had that you played a part. And it was a big part, but it was all, you also feel small. You slip into like the tininess, like into this childlike state. But you're also confident that you were right where you were supposed to yeah. be. And that God saw every bit of it. You didn't disappear into the sea of faces when it came to him. He saw the whole thing. Yeah but you didn't need to be the one with the microphone. Yeah. I just feel like I'm bringing it back to the conductor thing, but like a, a great conductor, if you watch them, right. they have everyone in mind. Yeah. But I love watching the symbol guy because you know, you know, they're like, he's waiting till the end of the song. Literally, usually he has like one, he just holds. Yeah. Holding and we're holding and we're holding, and it's like you almost see the like the twinkle in the eye of a conductor, knowing like you're it's coming, it's coming up. Not everyone is a first violin, guys, and it's important. It's so important. Like I just love watching. I love watching someone who actually knows, like knows, like I am meant for this moment. And when this moment comes around, I'm going to play this the best that I can. Yeah. And there's something about handing off to each other. Like that moment on Friday would not have happened without family. Like it's like Steph came up, started dancing. I watched the whole thing. I was so moved by it. And yet we're in the middle of it. And I, you know, I watched it back. And I watched this moment happen where Steph flies in, starts dancing, and then we, we hand off the mic. She talks about dancing. And then our drummer, Joe initiates this moment because there's there's a family atmosphere that's actually changing all of us right now presently guys I mean this is you're watching it and like happen in real time but I I just watched it happen in real time where it's like family handing off to each other Tim sings something Sean's talking Jacob's dancing Sarah's dance everyone's dancing it's just it felt like everyone was like part of this symphonic like moment totally submitted to the conductor Knowing that he always has us in mind. Yes. He knows the moment, like when our symbol clash is coming. Do you know what I'm saying? And it matters to him. It matters to the music. It matters to the sound across the earth. It really, really, really does. Anyway, I wanted to say that because I just, I love the. It's huge. Yeah. Lord, bless it. Bless all of us. Keep us in step with your spirit. Show us our pace of transformation where we're at right now. Help us celebrate that in this moment, this present moment. We just release the anxiety of psychological time of living in yesterday or the future. And we embrace you, Holy Spirit, 
the present presence of God right now. Lead us into the places you want us to go, into the depths, into the rest, into the watching of the waves. In Jesus' name, amen.